Hello everyone. In this video I'm going to show you all how to model a bookshelf from a cube. So in Maya I'm going to start by just clicking on the cube. Uh, it's a good idea to have the modeling tab here uh, selected in case it's not and then also make sure you're on your poly modeling tab and we're going to go ahead and click on the cube. Now from here we're going to just simply scale it, tapping R on the keyboard with your object selected, or scale right over here. We're going to go ahead and start to uh, scale this to an appropriate size. And something like that will work. I'm switching, I tap spacebar on my keyboard to toggle in between viewports. So right now, I'm basically just gonna make sure that I've got it sort of level with my uh, grid, just to give it a little bit of uh, a visual feel of grounding in. So now that I've got my object here and I like the way it's scaled, um, just to actually make this uh, a little bit easier, in your in your um, channel box information um, after you've tried if you want to make sure yours is basically exactly like mine you can enter these numbers in into your channel box with your cube selected. So you can do translate Z, or I'm sorry, translate Y at 5, uh, your scale X at 3, scale Y at 10, and scale Z at 6. And that will give you the same exact dimensions as mine. Now the next thing I would uh, need to do is I need to make sure I'm in my attribute editor. So the, if you don't have it already docked here on the side, clicking this little button it's directly left of the little hammer icon um, so show hide attribute editor if I click on that it'll open up my attribute editor now if it's not off to the side and it shows up in like a pop-up window you can go ahead and simply dock it just click the top of it move it over and you can dock it off to the side now in here I need to go to my poly cube one and in here I need to change my Nope, I need that one to stay at 1. I'm going to change my height and my depth to 10 and 10. Now from here, now that I've got uh, in my polycube tab under the polycube history subdivisions uh, height and depth that I've increased, you'll notice that I have a lot more topology on this. But we're going to need it because well, we're going to start to create shelves for this. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hold with my object selected. And if you do run into anything where you're having, you're struggling trying to select your object, just click the pointer here. That's always a quick, easy way to sort of reset um, yourself within the viewport. And just go ahead and select your object. Now, holding right click on your object, we're going to go to face mode. And we're simply going to click here and holding shift, we can click each one of these faces. Now if I click one face and then holding shift, double click one in the same exact row, you know, uh, a little ways down, it will select every corresponding one in between that. So that's just click one and then double click the one at the end and it'll select all of those. And if that's uh, a little confusing for you, you can always do the traditional way and just select each one individually. So there's my shelves, uh, at least the locations of those shelves. And I need to figure out um, how I'm going to sort of inset these because if I use the move tool and I just drag it in, that's not going to work very well. So what I need to do is I need to create some more additional topology and I'm going to do that by extruding these faces inward. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the poly, uh, poly modeling tab 
and I'm going to go to the extrude button. It's like this little rectangular surface uh, pulled out of a polyplane, basically, um, if that makes sense to you. It will uh, soon. So we can go ahead and click on that. And you'll notice you get this thickness and all this other stuff. And you have a little move and scale and sort of rotate tool here. Um, we only are going to focus on the move tool. Now you can go ahead and just move these in. That's one way of doing it. And it'll say local translate Z, uh, yada, yada, yada. Another way to do this is under thickness, just do, you know, you can type in a number and see how that works. So that's another way to do it. Um, and make sure uh, when you're doing this, you only press the extrude button once, because otherwise you'll probably run into complications. Um, and then the other way, you could just tap W and get rid of all that stuff and enter your move tool, and you're just moving those faces inward. So that's one way. Now, uh, other ways to extrude. They're all the same tool I'm going to show you. There's just a couple different ways to access it, and whichever way is most comfortable for you. Um, but I would like to show you all the w different ways to do this. Now, if I have my move tool selected, and I hold W, and I go over and hover over my move tool uh, arrows, I can also extrude that way. All right, so that's just holding shift and hovering over the extrude tool and then pulling out from there, okay? So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do this uh, under edit mesh and extrude. Same exact thing as pressing this button uh, and you get all those same features. And the last way is holding control and E pressing control and E and that'll bring, give you a keyboard shortcut for extrude. So there's basically two keyboard shortcuts holding shift over the move tool uh, will extrude. Control E will extrude and then you have the button here to extrude and you can also go to the pull down extrude. So um, that's how you extrude faces. That's uh, All four of those are the same exact thing. It's just uh, different ways to access it. Now, um, another thing I would like to show you is now that I've got these faces selected and extruded, I want to get a closer uh, range of distance to the end of the bookshelf without actually bleeding through. And of course I could just sort of eyeball this and be like, hey, I know that's pretty good. But the real way, the proper way to do this, to check the distance on how far that's extruded in, is I'm going to tap spacebar to enter my four viewports. And I'm going to go to my front viewport in this case. And I'm going to tap four on my keyboard. And that's going to bring me into wireframe mode. And I'm going to be able to see it just from the orthographic, uh, orthographic uh, viewport. Now, and I can get as close to the edge as I want without actually bleeding through. If I zoom in here you'll see I can even get a little bit extra room. But I like to play it safe and give it a little bit of distance in between it as if it has some thickness. Now the next thing I would like uh, to do is when you're in here tapping 4 will enter you to wireframe but also tapping 5 will enter you into shaded display. There's also 6 which is shaded display with texture maps and that is when we get into texturing and 7 is uh, shaded display with textures on with lighting so four is wireframe five is uh, shaded display six is shaded with textures and seven is shaded textures with lighting um, but for now we only need to worry about four and five but just to give you a little idea and you can do this for any window so now that I'm looking at it in the perspective view I can go ahead and see that I'm pretty close to the edge but I've got just enough room and that allows me to see this in uh, perspective view now, um, also, uh, let's go ahead and show you how to save. Um, this is pretty easy. You can do File, Save Scene As, or Control Shift S. And then over here, uh, and then it'll come up with this. You, all you have to do is name it, it'll come up with this little pop-up window, student version, file, yada, 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 hit continue, and you're good to go and you're saved. 
Um, so, uh, for the submission, um, I'd like to show you one last thing. With your, uh, in, within your viewport, I want you to go to Shading and go to Wireframe on Shaded. And you'll see that you have your object like this. So that's Shading and Wireframe on Shaded. And I just want you to go ahead and take a screenshot of your object. You can have it selected or whatever. Um, and if you, as long as I can see the wireframe on it, you're fine. So as long as you just select the object. Um, but you could also do it this way wireframe on shaded and now um, just take a screenshot uh, you could save it out as a JPEG or whatever um, and then just upload a screenshot of the bookshelf um, if you're uh, struggling and your screen capture whatever isn't working you can submit the Maya file also um, that's not a big deal but um, I prefer uh, a screenshot for this assignment um, as long as you have something that looks just like this, you're good to go. Um, make sure you have the 10 subdivisions on uh, both width and uh, uh, depth and height, I believe it was. Um, it really, it, depending on how you scaled your object, that really doesn't matter as long as you have them on uh, the proper uh, axes. So like, um, had I scaled this differently, maybe I would have done 10 here. And obviously you can see that totally messes up my object for now so I'm not going to do that again but um, yeah that uh, that's how you go ahead and uh, however you have it just make sure you have at least two of them with 10 so you were able to create these shelves um, but again as long as it looks just like this uh, you're good to go and um, yeah um, I hope this was easy to follow and uh, go ahead and message me if you have any questions. Thanks for watching.